In this section, we want to start establishing our mathematical rules for counting, which really is just as simple as it sounds. The idea that we want to count how many things are possible or how many things exist, but in some scenarios, counting manually each item would just take too long. So we're going to introduce some formulas over this section and the next that help us accelerate that counting process. And these techniques for counting are going to feed into probability, which is something we'll cover later in the course. The first thing that we want to do is establish what we mean when we say a standard deck of cards. Depending on games that you play, these might be ideas that you're very familiar with, but to make sure we all have the same grounding principles here. So whenever we refer to a standard deck of cards, that means we have four suits, which we can see listed out here. Two of those are red, hearts and diamonds. And two of those suits are black, which are clubs and spades. So two different colors split across four different suits. Each suit has nine different numbered cards that span from two to ten. Each suit has three different face cards, a jack, a queen, and a king. Here they're not depicted with faces, but traditionally you would see a picture of a person on those cards, so giving them the name face cards. And then every standard deck, I'm sorry, every suit has one ace, which is marked with an A. Depending on the game, the ace can have the highest point value, the lowest point value, uh, or it can change. But the important thing to note is that an ace is different than a face card. So when we talk about the different types of cards within a suit, there's either the numbered cards, one of the three face cards, or an ace. Now we want to ask a relatively simple question. How many cards are in a standard deck? Like I said a minute ago, this is literally just counting the number of cards that we have pictured here. Or if you're familiar with a standard deck, you might know how many cards exist. But we're going to get into problems where counting up the number of possibilities starts to become cumbersome or nearly impossible. So we want some mathematical processes for approaching this. If you kind of squint your eyes at this grid of cards that we have, you can start to see that it looks like a rectangle. With one side of length four for each of those different suits, and then the other side with a length of 9 for each of those numbered cards, plus 3 for each of the face cards, plus 1 for the ace, giving us a total length of 13 on that side. To find the area of a rectangle, we take length times width, or one side multiplied by the other side, in this case, that would be 4 times 13, or 52. Similarly, we could answer some questions about how many face cards there are. We could count this up pretty quickly, but to continue demonstrating a pattern that's going to carry over into the rule that we're establishing in this section, we want to get there via multiplication. Again, we have four suits, and we could multiply that by the three face cards that exist in each suit to tell us that there are 12 total face cards in a deck. And we could also look at how many numbered cards there are. Again, we have four suits times nine numbered cards in each suit gives us a total of 36 numbered cards. We could go back to our picture of all of our cards laid out and verify that pretty easily just by counting those up. 
But again, this process for multiplying two values together is going to set up the process that we're going to look at for this multiplication rule for counting.